Right. Okay, so Liz, this is going to be, as soon as they walk in, we're going to do this obstacle course. It's already set up for you. Um, they're going to be kind of confused because it's not what we've done the last two weeks, but it's going to be a good cardio warm-up that they'll enjoy, and I think that will be a, um, something fun for them and less stressful for you. So, they'll pick a line. This way, I think there's six of them. I know we'll be missing Maisie. So you may have five, I'll check on that. Um, Cora, Addy, if you know, Carly, you know. Claire, I'm not sure if you've ever had her before. Um, there's a little boy named Gabe and a little girl named Anna. Um, Anna, just to let you know, she's only six. She's just very tall. So just keep in mind, she is very young, even though she looks a little bit older. It's only her second week trying. So, um, just give her lots of support and everything she does, she needs to feel very successful because it's kind of a scary thing for her specifically. So, um, they'll come in, they'll make a line, um, trying not to mess with each other's bodies. They're going to put their hands on their waist and I would have them not have the second person start until the first person has made it to the next thing, meaning like has made it to the balance beam, then you can let the next person start. Um, and that should start them off relatively spread out. So they're going to jump apart together on these dots all the way down. Yeah, super fun. Okay, so from there, they're going to just walk the balance beam. Yeah, parallel feet. You know, I turn them out. And from here, I'm going to back this up a little bit so they don't get it coming with their head. They're going to slide down on their bellies like a penguin. I'll let you just imagine that one. Okay, so they're going to slide down on their bellies. From there, they're going to weave in and out of these. And then they get back in line and they go again. I would put on some fun music for this. Um, I don't know, like some Descendants or Disney Zombies or Kids Box or something. Just kind of have it playing relatively low. Let them do this for probably a good five to seven minutes. From there, something that's worked in the past is giving them each a job of picking up something. So maybe you have a couple people pick up the dots. This one can be a little challenging. This is definitely challenging. So they'll need help with those two. And then it comes, they can help pick up. And if you just want to put them in the corner or away in the masses of stuff, just away, I'll clean everything later. Um, from there, they're going to do a stretch. Um, I start the acro kids with arms up here and they do side body stretches, side to side, about, I don't know, four times. And going over to their right leg, holding, center, rolling up. Same thing on the opposite, all the way down. Head, shoulders, arm circles, and then they would sit down for butterfly. Once they're in butterfly, nose to their toes, we do wrist stretch. So they're in their body for butterfly, they stretch this out. Um, we talk about what do your toes smell like, I think that's relatively funny. So if you want to go down the line and buy some time, it's a good idea. Uh, they do puppy paws, stretching them on the ground, and pizzas, they sell it, they show it, they splat it. They sometimes have a lot of trouble with which way their wrists go, so you might want to kind of check on that if they understand. Um, from there, they'll roll their wrists out. I sometimes do the old, like, skid a dinky dinky song. I don't know if you know that. If not, just, you know, whatever, make up something. Um, from there, uh, go to straddle stretch. Yeah, and just over holding, nothing too fancy with the arms because they're pretty little. Over to the other side and center stretch. Um, from there, we have been training our splits. Um, we've been using the yoga box, however, we had some mishaps last week with the yoga box getting picked out little holes and they're all over. So just have them tomorrow uh, do regular, put their hands, split their hands, try to roll into their split. Um, basically trying to teach them to stay off of their bottom and making sure that they're going over their hip versus back here. Um, so it'll be kind of scary. Um, some, some tips, if they're struggling to get there, they can go up on their knees, stretch just their front leg, hands down, and then straighten both legs. That is helpful. Both sides on that, um, shoot through. I wouldn't worry about doing like holding a straddle slit or anything. Um, but shooting through from there, they're going to push up to their cobra position from here and do that a few times up and down, trying to pull their elbows into their body. 
Um, from there, they can do TS. So they're going to put their arms up in a T, and they're going to lift up and down. Hopefully, they'll go a lot higher than my whole body will. Um, so up and down, probably like eight times. What I do usually is I go up, two, three, four, take them down. Yeah, when they're that little, they can kind of slap them. It's real funny. Um, from there, have them do some cow cat cats, and then boat rocks. Um, several know how to do boat rocks. Um, Gabe, Anna, probably will need some assistance. Basically what they do, it's just like the timing gets a little bit weird sometimes. Oh, and they'll be on the mats for this, not on the floor. All right, um, arms and legs are straight. The first thing they do is they try to lift just their arms, then just their legs up and down. And they should rock bigger again than I do. Mine are like little baby ones. My back's broken. Okay, um, so boat rocks. Some of them may want to go to a chin stand. I think maybe only Maisie, so maybe not anyone that will actually be here. Um, from there, uh, they can do some rock and rolls like this. And stand up. From there, have them make a line against the mirror. And you're going to have them do crab walks side walks down the mat. So they'll be on the front mat coming this way, and then back mat going that way. Again, doing them kind of one at a time. Um, they like let them do the first mat, then they can go on the second one on their own while you start the next trial. Um, so crab walks going that direction. Um, from there, bear walks here, so they're here. And on the second half, they can do bear jumps. So they have hands and feet. Hands and feet. Um, by then, hopefully, you should be about 15 minutes into class. Caitlin's going to come over to help you. She'll be in her voice lesson, but she's going to come over and help spot some things. So after we've done those bear walks and crab walks, have them spread back out on the mat. Um, they're going to lay down and push up to their bridge. Usually, we would do this earlier, but I want to buy you some extra time to get some help. So they're gonna push up to their bridge. Some of them have them. Cora, Addy, Claire, for sure. They have Carly. Carly sometimes needs a little bit of help. It's just confidence, I think. Um, pushing up to their bridge. Gabe can do it, but I'll tell you what, he is a daredevil. So just keep an eye on him because he'll like flip around, but he does have the prettiest ballet thing I've ever seen in my life. Like check out his point into it, it's insane. Um, so Caitlin will come in, doing their bridge. If they have a strong bridge, we can support them. They can do one leg up in their bridge, one leg up in their bridge, hand on their belly. But again, Caitlin will have a good idea of like who looks ready and who doesn't. Um, from there, they're gonna go back in line. They're gonna do four rolls down the mat. And I suggest like you standing at one mat, Caitlin standing at the next one. Basically, they just need to try to stand up using their arms. Um, everyone can do them. Anna uh, was a little bit hesitant last week, so what I do if they're a little bit hesitant is I just have them put their hands on the ground here, tell them to look at their belly button. I take all of their hips from behind them, and I slowly just lower them down. I make sure their chin is pulled to their chest, so they're not going to roll this way, and I just help them over. If you're not comfortable with that, Caitlin can help you. Um, do that for sure. She's done it a bunch. Um, so four rolls down both mats. Um, from there, they can do their cartwheel attempts. Now we're not going to do cartwheels as in you're going to spot them um, because even for anyone, unless you're really, really used to spotting little bodies, it can be scary and I don't want to put that on you. Um, so what you're going to do, we're going to get out the yoga blocks for this one only. Um, and you're basically down the mat, so this stuff wouldn't be there, but you put them, I don't know, probably two, like two sets of two on the front mat, two sets of two on the back mat. And basically what you would do, pretend like this is on the mat, they've done this. They'll take their toe in front, uh, if they are on the front line, it will be their left toe in front, arms up, and again, don't worry about spotting them, 
you know, they're going to be, some of them have them, some of them don't, but basically we just want them to get it over. So they're going to put one hand on one side, one hand on the other. Um, some of them are close to a cartwheel, most of them are going to kind of look like that, <laughs> okay? But it's not about getting them all the way up. We want them to just start giving some of the weight to their hands. So but don't worry about spotting them. If they ask you, just say, today's about you trying, right? Um, Carly likes to land on her knees really hard, so just enforce with her landing on her feet. Um, and again, one of you on each mat, I would have them just do the best. Some of them even might just jump over, which is okay at this age, all right? So don't stress about it, do what you're comfortable with, and if it's like not working, scrap it. Cool? All right, from there, I'm gonna have Caitlin come up to this mat with you, your Caitlin can probably spot it on their own. Are you comfortable spotting mm -hmm. backwards? Okay, so Caitlin's gonna spot backwards. I'm gonna have them do a more triangle position here. They're gonna follow their hands all the way down, all the way up. Um, and you're really gonna have to do the work for them, Katie. Mm -hmm. Okay, all the way down, all the way up. If you want to, you can move them kind of the center of the mat on that so their parents can see. They like to kind of see what's going on. But it's gonna be you doing most of the work. Um, I don't think any of them actually have their back bend yet. So, um, straight arms, sometimes I have them like push on me to show me their strong arms. Gabe will try to do it by himself. Do not do it by himself, okay? Because he tries to go back with just his head. It's a horrible idea, okay? Um, from there, you should be close to the end. Um, if there's any time, I would have them do like some jumping jacks, some tuck jumps, things like that. Um, yeah, and that should be it. That's the after class. All right, Liz, so I'm gonna talk you through the second class, which is a beginner, their mini hip hop. There's, I think, five in there um, right now. Um, they're a little wily, but they're good kids. I would have them start and just put the mats up, like you can fold them up or whatever, don't worry about cleaning them, I'll do it when I get back. So push the mats to the side. Um, I'd have them do like 15 laps around the room, just running, maybe come center, do like 20 jumping jacks, try some burpees, um, then maybe run again, um, getting them warmed up. Then put on some music and do head, shoulders, ribs, hips, side stretches, squat stretches, butterfly straddle. I usually have them go to pike and then do some like sit-ups from pike. I'll have them do like lay down and be a monster when they come up or lay down and be a princess when they come up. Lay down and be, what else have I done? A oh, bunny rabbit. Um, lay down and be a zombie. Um, so kind of a sneaky way to get some abs in there. Um, from there, they have a little like warm up dance that we've been working through. I'll send you the link to the music, but um, you may have done some of it before maybe, um, but it's Chris Zonda Flex's little warm up. But basically the beginning, they just like dance and then it says head, shoulders, knees and toes. They do head, shoulders, knees and toes and they jam again. Then they do head, shoulders, knees and toes, jam again. Then it's let your knees wobble so that those knees go. Da -da 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 -da. I think next is what is the swish, swish. Everybody do the swish, swish. What is the swish, swish. Everybody do the swish, swish, then they raise the roof, raise the roof, raise the roof, raise the roof. From there, it's the hula hoop. He says all the cues. Yeah, and they can kind of go down. And however they want to move, right? It's all about like exploring their movement. Then they have wax on, wax off, wax on. Of course, more gusto than I'm giving right now. Wax off. Then it goes back into head, shoulders, knees, and toes, dance. Heads, shoulders, knees, and toes, dance. And then let your knees wobble, knees wobble, knees wobble, knees wobble. From there, they take their baseball back. So they grab their baseball back, they throw an imaginary ball, they hit the imaginary ball, watch it go. So it said, it literally says, grab your baseball back, throw it up, and hit it on the park, something like that. They do that a couple of times, grab your baseball back, throw it up, hit on the park. Then they're gonna do, they have not learned that this part yet. They're going, oh no, they did do this. They do, they watch it go, clap, 
watch it go. Watch it go. Watch it go. And I believe after that, the next cue is slide to the right, slide to the left, slide to the right. We can check on that and there. Um, I think it does a repeat from there, but if not, then you could just stop it there. Um, I'll check on that. My brain's kind of fried. From there, I have them go across the floor, just kind of doing like whatever walk makes them happy. You can give them cues like, show me your tough guy walk. Show me your uh, sassy walk. Show me your uh, happy walk. Show me your sad walk. Show me how a three-year-old would walk. Show me how a grandma would walk. Show me how a princess would walk. Show me how a tiger would walk. Like all different things. Um, there's a few different songs I'll send you if you wanted to play with. They also give verbal cues in them. Um, there's one like they do like they walk around like a bear crawl and then they do crab walks. And again, it's totally cute. That one's really fun. Um, and again, they haven't done it. So if you wanted to like teach them in any way that makes sense to you, that's totally fine. Um, that's a fun one. I think there's another one that gives really great cues that might to be to do with like tutting. Um, or something. I'll send that and you can play with it. From there, um, once you've kind of like ran that gamut of things, I usually have them come center and do basic ticking. So they do like little ticks up and little ticks down. Then we've been doing one arm up and one arm down, one arm up, and then kind of like starting one, then starting the other, things like that. Um, from there, you can have them do like like starting towards like doing a dime stop. So they're gonna do a smooth movement and then stop it. Then something smooth, then stop. Smooth, then stop. Yeah, um, and they can create that in any way that they want to because it's all just kind of getting comfortable with ideas. From there, I usually pull out one mat and I have them try their donkey kicks. Um, they've done these and they're familiar with them so they can probably show you. Um, it's basically just hands on the ground. I don't even think you can see. Yeah, I gotta pull it back here. But hands on the ground above, jump up, and then on one foot they can hit, and then they sit. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. But if not, they can probably show you. Most of them have done it. It's coordinating, like putting down that leg when they slide. Um, also make sure their hands are on the mat and their face is not off of it because we don't want them slamming into the ground. Um, yeah. So super safe on that. From there, if you have a substantial amount of time, then you could, uh, I would drag that stuff out, but you could teach them like a little portion of like ponytail or a combo. If you're like running out of time, at the very end, I usually make a circle and have them do a free dance. So like one comes in at a time, I point to them. Um, they could also do little Sally Walker. Um, not the song you guys dance to, but the song where one person goes around and stops, they dance in front of one girl, they try to copy it and then switch. So that's some ideas too. Um, at the end of both classes, if they do a good job, they can have an airhead, I'm gonna hand sanitize them to send them on their way. Um, I'll have somebody come down and lock up the studio. So if you can just make sure all lights are off when you're done, um, that would be awesome. Thank you so much, I appreciate it very, 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 very much.